Hey everybody, Jake here with Trendspider to do a midweek video. I uh, wasn't planning on doing one, but figured why not. So uh, what, this is going to be similar to last week's video uh, where, you know, we're just going to kind of do a freestyle here. We're not, I'm not going to go through a bunch of charts that I've already created. This is about the only one that I've really taken a look at today, at least after close. So I really want you guys to get an idea of how I use the platform on a day-to-day -day basis, how I'm drawing my trend lines, how I'm using automated trend lines to do that. Um, as well. Not every trend line that I post is going to be an automated line. Some are going to be segments, some are going to be raised. So we'll go over a few different things. Um, starting with SPY, the biggest thing that I want to go over here is the fact that we had this breakout today through resistance. And the main thing that I want to show here is the wick in today's candle. And then notice how much volume was in that candle. So what that means is We've got a big chunk of volume in this raindrop compared to what looks like a sell off here into close. And the thing about this is, you know, people will say, oh, well, that's that's selling volume. That's buying volume. Well, there, volume is is a function of both things. You can't have buying without selling and you can have selling without buying. So um, what we're looking for in the raindrop is the ability to see where that selling and where those shares that were sold were absorbed by buyers. So in this case, you can see pretty easily here the fact that we've got this uh, this wick, but you can see any of that selling pressure that happened and pushed the price down was actually absorbed by buyers here, shown by this big chunk of volume at the top of the range. So this is indicative that there were buyers in control near the top of today's range, especially above this resistance area. Does that mean we're going to rip tomorrow? Absolutely not. It really doesn't mean anything. It's just an observation that volume was being absorbed near the high of the day. Now, there are plenty of case studies where you do have continuations here, and there's plenty of case studies where you don't. I would personally say after doing this for about a year with raindrops, there's a lot more case studies of continuation after this type of setup than not. So, for example, if we go to Spotify, this is a really cool – oops, I did spy, not spot – we go to Spotify. Um, this was something that was really interesting over the last few days. Uh, or not Spotify. Ugh, I Shopify. Whoops. My bad. All right. So what we have here is we've got the daily candle. And then we've got the, uh, the raindrop daily candle. And what you can see here from yesterday, you can see really something pretty fascinating happen. Notice that we clearly closed above this resistance line. But you can see all of that volume within that wick was actually buyers absorbing supply. And you can see that because you've got this big chunk of volume at the top. So is that buying or selling volume? As I mentioned, it's neither. It's buyers absorbing the selling, uh, people selling shares up here. If there were no buyers above this trend line, we wouldn't see volume here. We'd see it allocated somewhere else along the range. But we know that buyers were able to absorb the supply and there was conviction by the buyers yesterday. And look what happens today. An absolutely massive rip to the upside. Even another balloon candle here um, showing that buyers definitely were absorbing any of that supply near the top of the range. And who knows, this may even actually have a continued move up into the last day of the week. Um, but as I mentioned, I generally like to use these raindrop kind of uh, balloon setups around resistance. Once you've already got this big of a move, it kind of is a little less, uh, what I'd say, kind of important to look at. However, it is important to note that there was a lot of buyers absorbing that supply near the top of the range um, in today's candle as well. Um, but you can see we pretty much closed at the high of the day, so that would kind of make sense that we do have a lot of that volume up there. Moving on, let's go back to the broad markets. We'll go to QQQ, and uh, you can see here that we really uh, clearly hit new all-time highs today um, and closed at new all-time highs. To me, that doesn't say anything bearish about SPY. If anything, SPY needs to catch up, uh, and there is still a gap above on SPY. While the uh, you know the QQQ uh, ETF is hitting new all-time highs, and that's just Nasdaq in general. But you can still you can see here there is a lot of volume absorbing supply at the top of this area. Um, very similar to what we've been talking about kind of the last couple of case studies we went over. So um, based on this, you can see that, you know, I'm, th in my opinion, doesn't matter. But 
you know, if we were to look in the past, is this going to be something similar to this where we get another continuation up tomorrow? We'll just have to see what happens. But a lot of people are still bearish. And uh, generally, when you have that much fuel, the fire just keeps burning. So um, that is QQQ. IWM is one that, you know, did have a rough day, but uh, it is still holding this area. Notice what I did here. I did an anchored VWAP from this previous test of resistance, and I created the original anchored VWAP. And then you can see through the properties area, I created a percentage band. So that means I went up 1.5% from the Alpha Trends anchored VWAP. And so essentially, I'm able to pick a range of the anchored VWAP rather than just say, you know, the precise exact price of the anchored VWAP. This allows us to catch some of these moves. Notice that, you know, this isn't, if we remove this, this offset here, you'll see that the price isn't really being, uh, isn't respecting the anchored VWAP as much. But if you add that, that offset, that 1.5% uh, offset, you can see that you're really able to capture some of that kind of that uh, margin of error around the line. And that tells us a much better story and actually acted as almost a perfect level of interest uh, for sellers above, at least for now. So um, based on the raindrop, it's kind of opposite what we're seeing here. Um, so if I do just remove this, you'll see that a lot of the volume was not at the top of the range today. A lot of the volume, especially during the second half of the day, was focused near the low of the day. And so does that mean that, you know, uh, risk is starting to kind of uh, be turned off? Uh, because generally small caps are riskier. We'll just have to see what happens moves in the broad markets if this does start to break down. Going into XBI, this is one that's been pretty fascinating to watch. Uh, really just support um, acting or previous resistance acting as support here. Uh, so we've been watching this over the last few days. Clearly, we have three different areas or multiple areas. That's three, four, five times this resistance area was tested. We finally broke out pulled back and now it's like it's looking like we're almost creating this uh, kind of a bull flag here notice that we've got a very defined initial kind of impulse move up and then we've got a very defined flag starting to form here so if I just create a line here and this is kind of uh, just make this a little more clean and then all I'm doing is I'm holding down the command key clicking and I'm cloning and all of a sudden we now have a pretty strong bull flag into tomorrow and if you notice here look at the raindrop um, you know we do have volume within that wick so if we split the screen here and we go to the uh, the hollow candle versus the raindrop you'll see that it looks like there wasn't a lot of uh, action because we pretty much almost have like a doji here but then you look at the raindrop and there's clearly volume supporting price above this resistance line on the bull flag. So definitely something to keep in mind into tomorrow. Um, anything can happen in the market, but let's just go ahead and put an anchored volume by price here and see where a majority of those shares are holding. So if we start the volume by price here, this is exactly what you want to see with this type of setup on the volume by price. Notice since this June 12th low, you've got what we call a volume shelf forming here. And these volume shelves generally like to act as a base for price to move up. So that's definitely something to keep in mind into tomorrow. Clearly, buyers starting to uh, you know, step in or we just have supply drying up. And remember, you do not have to have an increase in demand for the price to go up. You just need to have demand remain constant and supply to decrease. Um, and if you're interested in more on how that works, you can check out our video on the supply and demand curves. Just type in trend spider supply and demand curves and we go over that um, to kind of explain that logic. So that is XBI. Let's move on to Amazon. This was a big mover today. Um, absolutely ripped through this ascending, uh, ascending wedge. And uh, you know, a lot of people consider ascending wedges something that are typically bearish. Well, um, I've seen more ascending wedges break to the upside than the downside and especially you know, you can see a lot of that volume is near the top of the range here um, in the candle. So you can see during the second half of the day, buyers were in control over this trend line. So will there be continuation up tomorrow? We'll just have to see. One thing that I want to point out here, notice this candle here, right? This has a big, uh, 
you know, a big range and a very small uh, body here. So you can see there's a lot of wick here to work with. And if we go to the uh, raindrop, we see something that we weren't seeing in the other in the other charts, right? We're actually seeing um, no volume, no buyers supporting the price here. So remember, this is uh, this is a hollow candle, meaning buyers were technically in control from the open to the close. But then if you go to the raindrop, you can see this was a red raindrop, meaning that the volume weighted average price, this right hand bar here, was lower than the volume weighted average price for the first half of the day. And you can see a majority of that volume, this big bulb of volume, was focused at the low of the day. Pretty much opposite of what we want to see on a balloon. And look what happened two days later. You had a strong continuation down to test the support before making the next move up. And now we are clearly breaking out big time here. And uh, we'll just have to see what happens. But, um, you know, a candle that looks similar is Tesla today. Just an absolute rip. However, we did not actually uh, close through this resistance line. This is a line that I personally drew. This isn't an automated line. But what I want to show here is we, we've got a lot of volume near the top of the range. I personally would have liked to see this bulb fully over this resistance line to show buyers were clearly in control over this area. But notice we did not actually break through it. And you can see that we closed right below this resistance line. Now, I want to go into an example of using the automated uh, trend lines because there are some great examples of using these. Home Depot is a cool example here. Essentially, all I need to do is turn on the trends feature. I'm going to go to enhanced, and then I'm going to go to wick to wick. And then the last one is ignore. We're ignoring gaps in price. And so if we apply this, look what happens. Without me having to do anything, I have a bunch of lines that pop up, and there's a ton of permutations that can occur within these uh, combinations of lines. So notice here, I can click here, I can click here, and that's one perspective. Doesn't mean it's the right perspective or the wrong perspective. It's just one perspective out of probably 100 plus that you could make with these lines. Let's say we look at it again, and who knows, maybe we look at something else. Maybe we're looking at this line, and we're looking at this line. And then we turn off trends again, and then we want to focus on this. There's no right or wrong way to use the trend line feature. It, it's there to automate some of the grunt work, but you still have the ability to have discretion in your analysis. And all of a sudden, without me having to put any thought into this, the system shows me the possible trend lines, and then I'm able to go in and have the discretion on which setup I really want to focus on. So this is not here to replace your technical analysis. It's here to complement your technical analysis. So moving on, we'll go to Roku. Roku was a really interesting one into, uh, into today. The reason why these lines are curved initially is because I have log turned off, and I drew these lines with log turned on. So notice they become straight when I turn on log scale. And uh, we mentioned this yesterday, uh, and we had this little uh, annotation called flush. And a flush is essentially trying to get all the sellers out, right? You're, you're taking out stop losses. You're, you're essentially kind of having someone testing out the waters here. And this is classic, right? You break down right below the trend line, and look what happened. We literally caught a nice candle yesterday and then a massive reverse to the upside right back into this resistance zone. So these can be very powerful reversals. Um, I think uh, I'm not sure who created this term. I think I've heard it from Brian and maybe a couple others. With failed moves come fast moves. So you have a failed breakdown, and then you have a massive rip back to the upside. This status quo really hasn't changed until this breaks to the upside or the downside, but we're getting very close to the apex of this symmetrical triangle. So something is definitely going to give at within the next week or two. Uh, let's go over Disney. Let's see what Disney's doing today. Disney's a great example here because we have this wick. So with the wick, we really want to turn the raindrop chart on to see if there was any volume supporting price within this wick or if it was like Amazon where it's completely flat here. So if I go and compare the, the hollow candle versus the raindrop, we'll see and get an idea if buyers were in control at all today. So in this case, we can see not really. This is very similar to that Amazon setup where we had that flat kind of area up top. And, realize, and remember, if there were buyers here, we'd have a big chunk of volume 
at the top here because we know that buyers were kind of absorbing supply. But since there were no buyers at the top of this range, the price had to drop in order to find buyers here. So notice this is very similar to that Amazon example we went over. And this isn't what I would call a very strong raindrop into tomorrow. Uh, so that is Disney. Let's go over. I'm trying to think of uh, let's do Facebook. Facebook absolutely ripped today. This is the kind of candle you want to see. Uh, and this is a really cool example as well of the Alpha Trends anchored VWAP using the uh, what I like to call passing the baton strategy. So for example, here we anchored the volume weight average price initially from this March 18th low. And then we also anchor it from this next test. Technically, I guess you could anchor it from this area too, but I personally want to wait a little. This, you know, this happened literally two days later. I want to see the price move up a little bit, pull back, respect this area, and then I'll anchor it from here. Notice that this anchored VWAP then acts as almost perfect resistance here. You could also anchor the VWAP from here, and you can see how well the price respected this area here. And then once again, we almost closed right at it on June 26 before reversing hard. So the next layer that I want to put in here is this, uh, this anchored volume by price. Notice that we've got this really big volume shelf forming. Price is really starting to break above it. We, before, when the price was, was below this area, we would call this a red or supply zone because the people holding from 226 to 230 were all holding at a loss when the price gapped down and uh, you know opened around 29, uh, 29, 209 here before reversing hard. So now that the price is above this area, these shares are now holding in a profit. And so this is a, now a demand zone because we know that demand started to outpace supply here or supply started to dry up for the price to continue to move up. And on top of that, if we go to the raindrop chart, you'll see that we do have that volume um, supporting price above this resistance or not resistance, but this volume here. And so that tells me that there was conviction by the buyers today. And uh, we'll just have to see what happens tomorrow. The biggest thing here is it really needs to clear these this previous high. And then until then, the status quo really hasn't changed. So uh, that is Facebook. Let's go into Netflix. Netflix was a really cool breakout today as well. Looks very similar to Amazon. But you can see the same thing, right? This is pretty much like uh, looking at Facebook possibly a couple days uh, be ahead of schedule. If we anchor the view app from this bottom, or excuse me, the volume by price, and then we even anchor the view app here, notice how well, if we anchor another one here, that this acted as support throughout this journey before finally moving up pulling back to this huge, huge volume shelf, and then finally breaking out of this ascending wedge. And so notice here, we've got a lot of that volume supporting price above the resistance. And so this is definitely showing that there was conviction by the buyers above this line. So that is Netflix. We have, a room, we have time for a couple more. Uh, let's do SLV. SLV was a cool example of this as well, um, using that volume shelf. You can see here, we had this broadening formation. We had a huge uh, volume shelf forming. Finally, yesterday we broke out of it. Huge move in silver. I mean, silver really doesn't move big that often, but when it does, it moves hard. But notice here, we kind of have this blue raindrop forming right at previous resistance now acting as support. And we'll just have to see if this is a blue raindrop showing the next leg up. Notice that every time you've got a blue raindrop, it's kind of defining that, that kind of... Uh, Consolidation area, notice you've got a move up, blue raindrop consolidates for quite a while, moves up, blue raindrop consolidates for a few days, moves up. Now we're at a blue raindrop again, and we'll have to see if this is kind of a, a, a move to the upside or the downside, but there's a lot of volume creating a base here for price. It's gonna be hard for price to move back down below this level. Um, so that's SLV. Let's do GDX as well. This one's been moving uh, pretty good until today, um, but, even though we were down today, at least on the price, you can see we have a green uh, raindrop. So volume was actually higher during the second half of the day than it was uh, during the first half of the day, which makes this raindrop green. So if you can see here, you can see that you know this bar on the left is your volume weight average price for the first half of the period. Let me just point it out here. And then your, your right-hand side bar is for the second half of the period's volume weight average price. And so remember, 
anytime that second second half of the period's VWAP is higher than the first, it's green. Here you can see the volume weight average price for the second half of the day uh, is lower than the first half, which is red. And then the blue rain drops are when you essentially have a volume based doji, which uh, which is pretty much just the volume weight average price on each side is equal to each other. So um, that is a little bit on the raindrops. Uh, one thing I want to do, this is a, this is a scanner example. Um, I'm just curious if there were any other balloon raindrops. And what we can do here is we can do balloon breakouts. And I'm not even sure if we're going to find anything. I'm just doing this kind of um, live. Uh, so you can see here, S&P 500. Let's scan uh, raindrops. And we'll go to add parameter, condition, daily, candlestick pattern, balloon, and we'll scan and see if there's any balloons that popped out. Oh, quite a few. So we'll go to CHTR. Oh, beautiful. Oh my gosh, you don't find that every day. So look here, we've got pretty much uh, you know, previous resistance here. We've got a beautiful breakout. If we anchor the volume by price from this low, look at that balloon starting to form uh, some, uh, some buyers absorbing supply above this volume shelf. And this could definitely be one that may continue into tomorrow. One of my favorite things to do is watch these raindrops and scan for these balloons within the last, let's say, 10 to 5 minutes of the day. And generally by then, the raindrop is pretty much formed for the day. And sometimes a strategy that um, I'll implement, I haven't implemented it in a while, um, at least with options. I did today actually with uh, common stock. But uh, you'll see here that, you know, this generally is telling us that buyers in control and you a lot of the time will have a nice continuation the next day. Um, that's CHTR, Charter Communications. We'll have to see what happens into tomorrow. But if you look here, notice we also have this volume gap, meaning we don't have a lot of uh, participants holding here until we get to around 534. So if I was to guess where this would find resistance, it would be the next supply zone, which is right around that 535 area. So uh, let's look at a couple others. Uh, they, they may not be as pretty as this one. You do have to manually look for the breakout here. So here's another example here. Um, let's just turn off the volume shelf. If we do this, kind of draw this line here. Notice we've got the balloon breakout, and then we've got two days of continuation up. We also have another balloon setting up here, and so that's another one to possibly take a look at into tomorrow. Remember, I'm not an advisor. I'm not licensed to give advice. This is not a video to tell you guys what to buy tomorrow. Simply showing the features on the platform that you can take advantage of, especially during the 4th of July sale, which we have 35% off. Um, so I will have a link in the, uh, in the uh, comments section that you guys can click on to get 35% off. You can also just follow us on Twitter, at TrendSpider, and uh, we have the link that you can sign up there as well. So uh, last one that I will go over, let's see. Uh, oh, what's a popular stock right now? Let me look on. Let me look on the old watch list. I have an everyday watch list that I kind of um, will look at. Let's do ooh ATVI. ATVI finally. Actually, we'll do a couple more. Uh, we'll do ATVI. Uh, the reason why I won't do too many more is just because it's going to take forever for this video to uh, render if it's too long because YouTube takes forever to do that. But notice here, ATVI, same thing. If we anchor that volume by price from this uh, capitulation point in March, notice the massive volume shelf that was forming, which pretty much created a launch pad for the price to move up. Now, if we go to some of the weed stocks, uh, those have been interesting lately. Um, CGC is one that we have uh, kind of this balloon breakout as well. We have this blue raindrop into tomorrow. Notice that we have dropped in price from, uh, you know, from the 22 area all the way back down to 30, uh, excuse me, uh, 15, which is about 30% down. And then we have this blue raindrop forming. So um, generally, I like to look for blue raindrops after a big move down and then see if there's any type of continuation up. Uh, CGC and Cron look very similar today. So if we go to Cron, you'll see all, something very similar where we've got this... Uh, anchored volume by price from here and you'll see you know we have a big supply zone above but remember if you look at uh, Facebook this was something that was very similar to how Facebook was forming before it broke through 
Uh, full disclosure, I am in this position. Um, so uh, just a heads up there. But uh, you know, anything can happen here, but it's still the, it's the same thesis, right? We just dropped almost 30% from the highs to the very lows. And then we've got this blue raindrop forming. So if we go to something like uh, GE, which is a cool case study on this back in April or late uh, March, you'll see the same thing, right? Not necessarily uh, as big of a move happened on Cron and CGC as GE, but you can see, right? There's no blue raindrops. We drop 55% blue raindrop forms. And then within literally, you know, five or six days from this blue raindrop, at least here, the price was able to move up almost 25 plus percent. So um, these blue raindrops can be very powerful. This is where the back tester comes in. You can go and back test a blue raindrop before you know you make a trade on it. So you can see, you know, it's like any stock. The MACD is going to work sometimes great on some stocks, and it really doesn't matter on others. That's because maybe a lot of participants are using the MACD. In this case, that's not necessarily the same. I don't think blue raindrops have become self-fulfilling prophecies, uh, but you do want to back test this and see what the return is. A lot of the time, these blue raindrops generally will just imply volatility. So notice here, you've got a blue raindrop within, within that amount of days, at least from this bottom, it was about 38%. And then we, we do the blue raindrop here. And then within about four days, it drops 16%. So blue raindrops in general are just telling us a lot of time there's likely some type of volatile period coming. So that is all for today. Thank you guys for listening in. I hope this video was helpful. Please remember we do have the 35% off sale. So if you do want to take advantage of that, that is um, starting to uh, you know lose time as far as how much time is left before it expires. It expires on Tuesday. So definitely make sure to take advantage of that before Tuesday. And um, who knows, this may even help you. In, into the weekend tomorrow if you sign up tonight. But it's really up to you. We want to make sure you're comfortable with the platform, but that's why we have the seven-day free trial so you don't have to uh, be obligated to sign right up and pay. You have seven days to see if this is something that helps you gain an edge in the market. And we do have one-on-one -on -one demos and we will extend those trials if needed. So um, once again, everyone, thank you so much. This is Jake with TrendSpider. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment in the, in the comment section below. And please give us a like if you enjoyed this video. And uh, we will see you uh, later and have a great holiday weekend. Thanks so much.